Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there, it's Joel along with Mike. It's the Cap and the Breeze Band here on Growing in Grace. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here to talk about. You know, uh, we've, you know, Cap, last week uh, you mentioned something about, you know, people being tired of religion. You know, of all that religious stuff. And I know that to some people, the stuff that we talk about, for, you know, they think that we're talking about religion because we're talking about Jesus Christ. I've had to explain that to some people uh, in the past. You know, what do you mean you're against religion? What do you mean uh, you're, you're not religious? Uh, well, you know, to me, religion or, or being religious means that I'm trying to, you know, perform well enough, change my behavior well enough to make myself acceptable to God, uh, to make myself right in the eyes of God. That's religion to me. And Jesus came, in my eyes, in my understanding, Jesus came to do away with religion. It was never meant to be religion that we lived by. It was never meant to be that. You know, from the beginning, Adam and Eve, God didn't tell them, now go and get religious, go and start a church, go and perform a bunch of religious duties for me. He never told them that. He wanted them to just simply eat from the tree of life and just to have this free relationship with God where they were dependent upon him and not upon their, themselves, but they ate from what I would call the religion tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, religion has run rampant since that time. And again, I believe Jesus came to take religion away. And so anyway, I don't know why I started off with that, but you know, religion to me should be dead, and uh, we should be alive to Jesus Christ. Well, that's for sure, and it sounds like a you know good conversation for another program. Uh, as we've been talking about the old covenant versus the new, we're going to kind of move on from there now and say, well, what, what must I do to, so that I, I'm in good with God? What do I have to do now, now that we've gone from that covenant that no longer exists to this new covenant that you guys are talking about? You know, I think something you might have just touched on real briefly last week, Joel, in the book of Hebrews, where we were comparing the sacrifice of Christ to the Old Testament sacrifices that the priests used to do that could never take away sins. And the other thing that I think you mentioned is that those Old Testament sacrifices, those who offered them, they could not be made perfect through those Old Testament sacrifices with the animals. They could not. And so, again, comparing the sacrifice of Christ to the Old Testament, uh, Old Covenant sacrifices, the implication there, again, is the Old Covenant sacrifices of the animals could not make us perfect. We have been perfected through the one sacrifice of Christ an important distinction, because Jesus said, and, and this is something we'll probably go back to when we talk about what the gospel is not, and, and we'll do that probably in one of these future programs, but Jesus said in the book, book of Matthew, when he was looking at the Jewish people and, and, and telling them, look, if you really want to try to get there on your own through your efforts, uh, here's the bottom line, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And, of course, nobody has ever obtained that until Jesus came along. First of all, he wasn't born into sin like the rest of us. He wasn't born in Adam. He was born of a virgin. And, and it wasn't even so much just about the performance of Jesus, even though he never sinned. It was just him allowing the life of God to flow through him. The relationship that he had, the bond that he had with his father, he just did what he, what the Father told him to do. Whatever he would see the Father do, that's what he would do. It was just the life of God flowing through him. He said, you'll have to be perfect. If you're going to try and do this on, on based on your effort, that's the requirement. And we have been perfected through Christ. Now, as we look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16, uh, you mentioned a pastor many years ago who had come into a, a, a greater understanding of God's grace. He became sort of religion-free is what you were talking about. And he asked the question that made us stop and think, what is the gospel to you? What a good question. You know, I, I think the word gospel gets thrown around quite loosely and, and without really getting examined, without really people understanding, well, or trying to think about what does the word gospel really mean? I think well, for and, it so and it sounds religious, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. And, and for a lot of years, when I would hear that word, the gospel, 
I thought of religion. I thought, well, the gospel is all about me performing for God. The gospel is, you know, when when I do all that Jesus stuff, when I do all that church stuff, when I do all, you know, that's what it was to me. And for, you know, I know many people, well, he's preaching the gospel. He was really, that preacher, he was really laying it down. He was telling us all the stuff we need to do. He was preaching the gospel, man. You know, a lot of misunderstandings about what that word, you know, really means and, and, and how it really does apply to our lives. And I think because of that, for many reasons, a lot of people are, are walking around in bondage, in the bondage of religion, uh, the bondage of the ministry of death and condemnation, uh, because that has been preached. You know, the law has been preached as the gospel when the two are really in complete and utter opposition. And so we'll talk about some of that stuff this week. There's some great scriptures, some great verses in the Bible, and there's so much that we can get out of a lot of them. But what we're about to talk about here, this pastor we were talking about, and and I I believe it's still true today, Joel, after all these years, these verses here, Romans 1, 16 and 17, are a cornerstone, uh, a foundation from which to to build your belief on and, and to trust in the finished work of Christ upon. These are foundational cornerstone verses of Scripture here that we're about to talk about, where Paul said in Romans 1.16, Romans 1.16, I, when I was a kid, Joel, I had that on a Bible verse memory card, and I knew Romans 1.16. I don't know if I ever paid any attention to Romans 1.17, but that's really the key here. Mm-hmm. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness, I've got this circled from this point forward, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness of God is revealed through the gospel, Joel. Mm -hmm. You know, as we were talking for the last couple weeks about the, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, in the New Testament, we're living in, you know, it's the days of the gospel. Well, in the Old Covenant, it was all about man's righteousness, the righteousness of man. You know, as we as we brought up a couple of times, that first covenant had a fault, and the fault with that first covenant was that man couldn't keep it. You know, God was faithful to keep his part. He he will always keep any covenant that he ever makes. He will always keep it. But man, man did not keep their part of the covenant. So if it was dependent upon the righteousness of man, then indeed, as you say, no one has ever reached that uh, perfection uh, that Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. No, no one has has done that. And so the good news, you know, what Paul was saying here when he says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ," he's <laughs> he's talking about it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, it's not the power of man, it's not my own power to save myself, uh, but it's God's power to save people. For in it, as you say, the righteousness of God is revealed, and, and so we need, need to heavily contrast that with the righteousness of man. In the gospel, it's not about the righteousness of man at all. It's not about what you can do. It's not about your behavior. It's not about changing from bad to good, uh, because then it would be about the righteousness of man. But here it says in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. And that, as you say, Cap, that is the key uh, to what the gospel is. Most people just want to know, let me throw this phrase out, they just want to know they're right with God. They're right with God. Well, you now have been declared righteous. You're righteous. I mean, if you were to go into most churches in America or around the world today and ask for a show of hands, just get up front Sunday morning and say, how many in here, how many of you believers in here are righteous? Would would you raise your hand? Very few hands will go in the air Mm -hmm. because they haven't received this revelation, this revealing They haven't understood it. They haven't been taught it. This revelation of God's righteousness, the righteousness of God revealed through the gospel. You and I, as believers in Christ, who have trust in that one sacrifice that he made for for all of us, just trusting in that and that, that blood that he spilled for us has given us new life. 
And so we're, we're not just changed as Christians. You, you mentioned that before, Joel, in the last program, I think. We, we, we have an exchange that, that has taken place. We've been recreated. We've been made brand new. And the Bible says that we're renewed day by day. So, yes, we've been perfected, like I mentioned earlier in the show. Somebody might say, well, nobody's perfect. Are you telling me you're perfect? From a human perspective, no, I don't do everything perfect. That's not what we're talking about here, though. It's not about performance. It's not performance-based Christianity here, okay? Right. Jesus made a statement one time, Joel. He said, with man, it may be impossible. I'm paraphrasing here. But with God, all things are possible. What, what is impossible to man is possible with God. So from a human perspective, I'm not perfect, but I have been perfected through the sacrifice of Christ. It has nothing to do with me. The, the gospel is not about you and me and how well we can live the Christian life. That's not the gospel. The gospel revealed is God's righteousness in us. Are we right with God now? Yeah, trust in him. And you're right with him. There's nothing you can do to ever change that. That's the good news. That It's, it's almost so good, it's, it's hard for some people to believe. Mm -hmm. It is. It's that's the, and that's the that's the whole thing about it. And what you're talking about there, you know, G, the, the disciples were talking to Jesus after. I think it was after um, Jesus exchanged with the rich young ruler, and, and Jesus said to the disciples, he, "How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God." You know, they're trusting their riches. They're trusting in themselves basically to get themselves into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they said, well, who then can be saved? And that's when Jesus said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And so, you know, it's it's impossible for man to save himself. There's nothing that we can do. But with God, all things are possible. And, and that's what Paul is talking about. It's all about the righteousness of God, which for us is impossible. Salvation is an impossible thing. <laughs> Let's put it that way, for man. But what, what's impossible for us is possible with God, because he can give us his own righteousness. And that is what he's done in Jesus Christ. He's given us his very own righteousness. And you know, the writer of Hebrews says that he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. Again, like you said, Cap, it's not about our behavior. Our behavior is not has not been perfected, but our spirit, the part of us that uh, relates to God and will be with God for all eternity, has been perfected, has been saved to the uttermost, has been made into the righteousness of God. And that is the only thing that counts. Joel, real quick before we wrap up the program, I've mentioned this before, one of my favorite movies, Forrest Gump, Lieutenant Dan out there on the ship, having it out with God during a storm, and when it was over with, Forrest Gump made the statement that Lieutenant Dan had made his peace with God. That's not what Christianity is about. It's not about us making peace with him. The truth is God has declared peace with us. And we're going to talk more about this. God declaring peace with you, having caused us to become righteous as a gift. And this is exciting stuff. If you've never heard this before, stay with us. We're looking forward to more of this conversation and what the new covenant has provided for us through Jesus Christ and that one sacrifice. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard weekly on Gracewalk Internet Radio and other online sources around the world. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.